Hi there, I'm Dr. Stephen Iacoboni at Cal Center Cancer Care Center here in Scottsdale. It's great to be here today. I'm here to answer some commonly asked questions that are sort of myths about breast cancer. We've been talking about um, breast cancer screening and the um, uh, fundamental um, tool for that is the mammogram. Um, the nice thing about mammograms is that uh, the technology has changed dramatically in the last 10 years so that the images are really, really good. And although they're uncomfortable, they're not invasive in the sense that you don't actually get poked with a needle or any other sharp object. And um, they um, uh, can do an incredibly good job of figuring out whether there's something there that needs to be worried about. Now, mammogram is an x-ray and so it works off of different densities of the surrounding tissues and the shadows that they cast. Uh, and so um, if you're young, the mammogram might not be um, quite accurate. So uh, the next step would be an MRI. And that's because an MRI is not an X-ray. Um, it's magnetic and so it takes images based on uh, the amount of water content in the cell as opposed to other things. Uh, and so it can generate a picture based on uh, whether there's density there or not. Um, MRIs aren't very comfortable and they're expensive and um, no one's going to pay for your, for your MRI unless you had a mammogram that showed that you need an MRI. So you need to take that into account as well. There's been some talk lately about um, uh, people having difficulty with the, with the dye that is used for an MRI that's called gadolinium. Um, tens of billions of Americans have been given gadolinium over the last 20, 30 years uh, with MRIs. And a um, very, 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 very tiny number, um, numbering probably less than 1,000 or maybe even less than 100, have in fact developed um, um, gadolinium uh, brain dementia. It's extremely rare. And so, uh, like anything in life, like getting out of bed and getting in your car, there are risks to getting out of bed. Now, the one uh, thing I will say is that if your kidneys are not uh, in great shape, then um, you and your doctor should talk about whether um, gadolinium is right for you because uh, there is some increased risk of kidney, uh, worsening your kidneys with gadolinium. Although, again, uh, the risk is so low that in typical practice, unless you're on dialysis or something like that, and if you need an MRI, um, your doctor will probably order the MRI and not um, have to take the very, very small risk of um, the fact that your kidneys aren't perfect. So I think that uh, everybody leading their life needs to have some uh, notion of what they're up against in terms of risks. Uh, so uh, I'm a middle-aged man and uh, I know that um, cholesterol and smoking and diabetes and uh, being overweight and lack of exercise uh, are risk factors for someone like me. Uh, actually, they're risk factors for men or women uh, for heart disease. Uh, that's been drilled into our brains for the past 20, 30 years. Uh, there seems to be a less um, a complete awareness as to what the risk of breast cancer is. So let's just talk about that. The number one risk for getting breast cancer is to have a first degree relative, uh, mother or sister, with breast cancer. Now if your aunt or your grandmother um, uh, or cousin has breast cancer, not so much, although that there is some risk there, but not as much. I left out uh, if your daughter has breast cancer. Unfortunately, that happens rarely, but if you have a, a daughter and she has breast cancer, of course, that's another risk factor. It's a first degree relative. Now, um, there is one genetic marker for breast cancer risk. Uh, it's BRCA, we sometimes say BRCA. Uh, and if your first degree relative um, breast cancer has that gene, then your risk for breast cancer is huge. It's about 30%. Uh, 
I think we all know about Angelina Jolie. Uh, she tested positive for that, and she did the one thing that can give her a 99% chance of never getting breast cancer, and that is she had her breasts removed. Now, there may be some confusion about that because women with prophylactic mastectomies do get breast cancer. How can that be? Well, the answer is they had an incomplete mastectomy. In other words, they kept their skin and the underlying tissue, and that offers some protection, but not enough. Uh, you're better off having a complete mastectomy if you really, really, really want to um, save yourself from getting breast cancer. Now, after family history, uh, the other risk factors do um, sort of trail off. The only other really important uh, breast cancer risk factor is um, having no children or waiting until you're older, that is over the age of 25, to have children. And the more children you have, the less likely you will be ha to have breast cancer. But um, if you're 30 and you have one child, uh, you're at pretty high risk of breast cancer. You're at much higher risk for breast cancer than someone who started having children when they were 18 and had two or three or more children. Um, now, I don't know of anyone who actually lives their life thinking about how they're gonna, when they're gonna get pregnant and all those sorts of things. We just live our lives and you, and you take what comes, but you need to know uh, how to be proactive about fending off um, the risks that surround you. So um, it's a lot more risky to go drive a car when it's icy outside, so maybe you wouldn't go out there. And if you're a woman who uh, waited uh, to get her medical degree or law degree and such um, before having children at age 35, that's fine, that's wonderful. But you know that you need to screen uh, very carefully uh, because the fact that you get breast cancer has nothing to do with what's gonna happen to you when you get breast cancer. If you have high risk for getting breast cancer and you catch it early, you'll still be cured at 90, 95% likelihood. So um, getting breast cancer in the days, in the current day of modern screening is not a, a, a death sentence by any means the way it was 20, 30, 40 years ago when a woman waited until she had a big rock hard lump in her breast and she was already at stage three. Fortunately, those days are almost completely gone. Just to complete the thought, um, there are some other lesser important but not negligible of risk factors for breast cancer. So if you have cystic breasts or lumps to the point where someone thought they needed to be biopsied, then you are at some risk and you have to keep an eye on those lumps um, because we don't know. The fact that you did a biopsy, again, is not a 100% assurance. Uh, it's about a 95% assurance, but uh, if you have a cyst the size of a grape and you stick the needle in one part of it, you're not gonna get every single thing out of there. Um, we do know that being overweight and being less active physically uh, are risk factors for breast cancer. Now, the, the increase in risk is about 10% above the average risk, so it's not like the other things we mentioned, which are 200% higher risk. Um, and then uh, excess alcohol use uh, leads to all sorts of bad things, and you can add to that list an increase of breast cancer. Well, that concludes our questions for this week. Uh, I hope that the answers have been helpful to you. Uh, if you have any other questions, we'd love to hear from you, either uh, by calling our office, Cuss Center Cancer uh, Center uh, in Scottsdale, or by email. And I look forward to sharing more uh, uh, answers to commonly asked questions about breast cancer in next week's video.